Hello, a warm welcome to you. This is Nationwide Ruth Aguena. You can follow this news broadcast live on our website. It's nta.ng forward slash live and all other all social media platforms. Governor Hope Uzadima of Imo State has condemned in strong terms the recent call for the suspension of the 2023 elections and the installation of interim national government after the tenure of President Muhammad Buhari, describing it as unconstitutional. The governor stated this while briefing journalists after an audience with the president on the state of affairs in the eastern heartland and the nation. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports. Governor Hope Uzodima was in the State House for the second time in one month to invite President Muhammad Buhari for the inauguration of some critical federal roads infrastructure projects executed by his administration in the state. The economic roads, critical highways that will alleviate the sufferings of our people. And uh, those roads have been there for over 16 years, unattended to. The overall law is uh, 44 kilometers dualized, making it 8, eight kilometers. The Okigwe, overall Okigwe is 59 kilometers, expanded from 7.3 meters to 10 point, to 12 meters. And Mr. President has graciously approved that he will be there to commission the roads, hoping that one day the Spirit of God will touch the heart of federal government and they may refund us either completely or some part of the money used for the construction. But what is important uh, and uppermost in our mind as a government at the state level is to make the rules motorable. The governor also briefed the president on the recent killing of INEC official in the state, saying it was out of anger by the criminal gangs having been repelled from attacking the correctional facility in Okigwe. The bandits Approaching Okigwe saw how fortified the place was, and they now tried to escape through Itu Boma. And they ran into INEC people where they were doing continuous voter registration. And out of that anger and frustration, attacked them. And two of the bandits have been arrested and are helping the Nigerian police, Imo State Command, now to uh, do a very thorough investigation. We are doing everything possible to ensure the situation is controlled and content. Currently, we are on top of the situation, I told you. Government is not sleeping. Nigerians should be more patriotic. Our national interests should be uppermost in our mind. Use this medium to call on Nigerian politicians to play politics without bitterness. And stop uh, letting blood here and there in the name of uh, looking for power. On the recent agitation by a legal icon, Chief Afi Babalola, that an interim national government should be formed to chart a new course for Nigeria, Governor Hope Uzodima described it as uncalled for and condemnable. By May 29th, if there is no elected government, our constitution has not provided for an interregnum. It shouldn't give a gap, otherwise we are creating room for anarchy. The constitution should be the instrument guiding our actions as a country. So, but if there is any opinion that they think that is worthy to be canvassed, superior to what is currently in the Nigerian Constitution, such opinion should be taken to the National Assembly, and then they will through due process amend our Constitution. The governor strongly appealed to well many Nigerians to guard their utterances and work more assiduously towards achieving sustainable future for the country. From the State House, Adam Musambo, NTA News. The Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria, Smedan, 
wants the National Assembly to update its legislation to enhance monitoring and evaluation mechanism for impact assessment of its activities. Management of Smedan says regulation would make coordination better and improve accessibility. At a meeting with the House of Representatives Committee on Poverty Elevation, the Director General of the agency, Diko Muru Redda, emphasized the need to amend the act establishing Smedan. The amendment, he noted, would facilitate growth and enable more citizens to leverage the economic benefits of MSMEs as additional areas to explore. Like the conditional grant scheme, like the for our local government one program and the National Business Skills Development Initiative, we all recommend that those projects should be national projects, uh, so that because it has a lot of bearing on reducing the poverty level and creating livelihood for our citizens. We'll be working together, and the committee will do all the needful to see that uh, we follow the normal procedure. Uh, until the bill is being passed by the uh, National Assembly, good will it. The committee expressed satisfaction with the level of implementation of capital and zonal intervention projects in 2021, made possible by 100% release of budgeted funds to the agency. The federal government is requesting all Nigerian science, engineering and technology professionals, both at home and in the diaspora, to file in their data on a newly developed database system meant for the registration of indigenous innovators and contractors. National Office for Technology Acquisition and Promotion, NOTAP, has directed these professionals to register their profiles with the office through the websites www.notap.gov.ng or https semicolon double forward slash dmp.notap.gov.ng for proper documentation as this will assist NOTAP and other MDAs to access the database in search of indigenous experts in carrying out construction contracts for the development of the country. This move, the Director General of NOTAP says, is in line with the implementation of the Presidential Executive Order 5, which is key to improving local content in public procurement with science, engineering and technology components. This is an indigenous Nigerian company. And that company got the award and they produce an excellent software for us to operate. I'm telling you, when they came and demonstrated this application, everybody was happy and proud that this is coming from Nigeria. So if we don't give Nigerians the chance, we may not see the best out of them. So we're encouraging other organizations also to follow suit and take lead from what NATO does to encourage Nigerians to come out of applications. Even our technology transfer registration platform, we have now fully digitalized. Instead of manual application treatment, we now do it online. And that application was also developed by a local indigenous Nigerian the database platform, which he says was designed by an indigenous software developer, will be synchronizing the initial 7,000 manual entries of current registered engineering personnel, and the database will be constantly updated. The federal government is committed to the completion of the stalled brass liquefied natural gas project abandoned by for more than 17 years, Minister of State Petroleum Resources Timipri Silva says government is seeking new investors to revive the project. In a statement, the minister restates government's desire to complete the project because of the manifold economic benefits it will bring to the nation. The brass liquefied natural gas, which has trained one to four concept with an annual projected capacity of 8.4 million metric tons, was initiated in 2005 with the groundbreaking ceremony performed by former President Olusegun Obasanjo on May 14, 2007. 
A look at all the issues as the raining season intensifies in parts of the south south region of the country, thereby enhancing the new farming season. Inputs and relevant farming equipment are the concerns of farmers in Cross River State for high level productivity. This is the view of farmers and stakeholders in the agricultural sector. While interacting with correspondent Maureen Liu Ajom in Calabar. Let's see that. Commencement of the new farming season, farmers in Cross River State, particularly rice farmers, are optimistic that if improved and viable rice seeds are provided to them, the Rice Revolution Initiative of the federal government will receive the boost as there will be increase in yield of rice production and other value chains. It's a matter of synergy and linkage with the weather to make the farmer be a more successful. With the establishment of the right processing me at the of the Goja Yala, because we can process a minimum of 10 tons per hour, and the me is where can that we can protect the different value of price we can think of. If you go to Abi Rufu government or Bogra, Yas Rufu government, all the rice farmers are clearing their rice fields in preparedness for uh, cultivation for this year. And uh, Live NG have been able to support some of the rice farmers by supplying inputs to them. These expectations of rice farmers is not far from being reached, especially as the Livelihood Improvement Family Enterprises Project, Naja Delta, distributes premier rice seeds, Africa rice breeder seeds, herbicides and insecticides, as well as fertilizers to train incubities of rice value chain in Cross River State. We need to look at the youth. This target here beneficiaries. They have the strength, they have you know, um, propensity to do those things that you know when keep us awake, even when you're supposed to be sleeping. With the gesture, the farmers are expectant of a bumper harvest. Agricultural stakeholders believe that with collaboration with relevant agencies, farmers will have needed inputs to increase food production and boost food security in the country. In Calabar, Maureen Liu, Ajon, NTA News. Ogun State Governor Dakbo Abiodun says Ogun Agro Cargo Airport will serve as a conglomerate firm in agro processing as well as Aerotropolis to provide value added services when completed. The governor stated this during an inspection at the construction site of the airport in Ogun State. Yemi Dalema reports. Provision that the construction of the Ogun Agro Cargo Airport, which commenced last year, will be ready for use in November 2022. Governor Dabo Abiodun says the International Cargo Airport, when completed, has capacity to provide facilities for cargo processing, storage, warehouses, training centers, among others. The governor disclosed that the airport is already attracting both local and foreign investors while the Nigeria Customs Service and Nigeria Air Force have requested for 100 acres of land to build their base and training schools in the facility. The agro-processing part is the most interesting part, which is what concerns um, Mr. Gupta. It's going to be a conglomeration of agro-processing companies companies that take raw materials process into finished goods those will be here we also have somewhere around here because this is 10,000 hectares we're going to have um, aggregation centers storage facilities for agro produce speaking on the signing of a memorandum of understanding with a foreign investor in providing infrastructure at the olokola free trade zone and Ogun agro processing zone for mobility, automobile and agro processing services for economic growth in the state. Governor Abiodo says the two projects will generate over 30,000 job opportunities. In Abelkuta, Yemidalimu, NT. Weather forecasters across West Africa and the Sahel are coming together to develop an annual seasonal weather forecast that will serve as a guide to farmers in the regions. The Nigeria Meteorological Agency is playing a key role in the initiative. Let's hear more from Musa Aliyu. Most parts of West Africa and the Sahel region have similar weather condition. Hot with low rainfall. Even with that, getting accurate and reliable weather information to support agricultural activities remains a major issue to farmers. This informed the idea of establishing a regional forum that will compile and disseminate weather-related information to farmers. 
because you know climate doesn't know the borders so even if you have a different countries different climatic area but they are interacting each other so that's why when we come together we will put our information together so that we can consolidate a strong information that is more stronger than having one individual countries providing his own information the nigeria meteorological agency is hosting weather forecasters from the regions this initiative is designed to carry rural communities along who will be the users of the information that will be provided. These are scientists and they should be able to come together and match whatever differences they have to produce one forecast for the region that will benefit all users of climate and weather information. Weather related issues have been a major challenge in the Sahel region affecting more than 43 million people. Musa Aliyu. NTA News. News from around the continent. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has declared a state of national disaster in South Africa. This comes a week after terrible floods left at least 443 people dead in the Durban area on the East Coast. In a televised address, the president said the cabinet met in a special session and decided to declare a state of national disaster while referring to the situation as a humanitarian disaster. Some 10,000 troops have been deployed to the affected areas to assist the overwhelmed relief effort. The week-long downpour has led to deadly floods and landslide in KwaZulu-Natal, where most of the casualties have so far been recorded. We're heading to Lagos now to join Adeola. Let's find out the latest from that zone. Thank you, Ruth. Muslim faithful across the metropolis have been enjoined to intensify their prayers for God's protection and guardians on the leadership of Nigeria to surmount the socio-economic challenges bedeviling the nation. The Grand Mufti of Ilori Emirates, Sheikh Farouk Uniki Jigba, gave the advice at this year's Ramadan lecture organized by the Lagos State Government. Musa Toliat has the report. This year's Ramadan lecture focused on the need to seek God's intervention as the nation troops work tirelessly to restore peace across the country. Sheikh Farouk Onikijikwa, who spoke on the need for patriotism in public service, said those jostling for political offices in the country must be willing to sacrifice address salient challenges and place patriotism above self. Some scholars took turn to lead special prayers for peaceful coexistence and a hit free general elections in 2023. After darkness, there is going to be light. When you are in a tunnel, and you don't give up you will come out of the tunnel and after you have come out of the tunnel you come into life nigeria is in a state of serious challenge we appreciate the economic situation of the country as we speak we also appreciate the issue of insecurity that pervades the entire country in all that we do prayer comes first women came in their numbers to supplicate for allah's protection over the leadership of nigeria and the well-being of the citizenry it is important for us as well to pray for our nation the theme of the ramadan lecture is patriotism and public service in lagos musa toliad nta news when this the increasing rate of domestic violence is such that requires a multi-dimensional approach and awareness campaigns to help reduce the societal menace to the barest minimum. These and more were views of a cross-section of Nigerians and curbing this ugly trend. Amaka O has the report. Available data shows that one in every three women are likely to suffer domestic violence in their relationships or from an intimate partner. If you love somebody, you don't hate. Love does not hate. Love does not get angry. And when it gets to that level, you should think again. This does not mean that the male folk are left out as some are also survivors of domestic violence. The court thing is for us to be able to um, nip it in the bud 
from home that is have your children brought up in the proper way experts say domestic violence is caused by several factors and has ripple effects on the victims and by extension to others within the immediate environment when someone is already a victim of domestic violence or any other kind of violence for that matter and we cast blames at them we're re-victimizing them we're re-traumatizing them and people have to be aware of that the children who go through this kind of life growing up it creates something in their minds that oh yes when i get married i could treat my wife like this or i could treat my husband like this some stakeholders are of the view that the more victims stay in an abusive relationship the more the physical and emotional damage the person suffers i mean how does a man beat you and you think there's nothing you can do i mean you know you just think you are stuck we need to let women the girls know you know that they must empower themselves and that um you know they are worth so much if there is abuse and there is pure abuse it is important for the woman who is being abused to make sure that she doesn't just keep silence they are also clamoring for more institutional support in stemming the tide of domestic violence in nigeria as some of the cases have led to untimely death of the victims in lagos amaka o nta news those are the stories from here we'll pause for a break after which nationwide will continue in abuja but don't forget that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on youtube at nta news online you can also visit our facebook page at nta network news twitter handle at nta news now and on instagram at nta network for updates the news will be right back don't go away Welcome back. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is appealing to prospective voters to avoid double registration as this is slowing down the process of voter registration. Discussing the continuous voter registration exercise on NTS Good Morning Nigeria, the Director of Voter Education says registered voters who have damaged or misplaced their cards or a seeking transfer of location should specifically indicate these instead of opting for fresh registration. Ekimna Williams will tell us more. Continuous voter registration exercise restarted by INEC in 2021 is to enable prospective voters who are yet to be registered do so. Replaced, damaged or misplaced voter cards and aid those seeking transfer of location. But this campaign to get eligible voters participate in elections has been a recurring one with mixed successes. It's about how do we make this as seamless as possible for everybody that will want to participate. Because for me, participation begins from registration. So my greater desire is to see that at the end of this exercise, we have opened up this space, encourage more young people especially to register in the process that at the end we should be talking about a hundred million Nigerians that have all registered and are willing to participate in the process. So what we need to do as political parties, as civil society organizations, as INEC2, we need to intensify the, 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 the awareness so other agencies of government too should uh, wake up to their responsibilities and do more by making some of this environment secure. Issues of multiple registration and incomplete data are what Director Voter Education of INEC, Victor Aluko, describes as major stumbling blocks to the process. People should not do double registration. Just tell us exactly what you want to do. Are you just 18 years or above or you didn't register before? Let us know so that you register afresh. Is it that you want to do a transfer? Tell us so that we transfer you. Is it that you want a replacement of your sprite card? Tell us so that we get you a new card. Innovations such as the automated biometric identification system, INEC is said to have between June 2021 and now registered 2.5 million Nigerians, but 45% have been rendered invalid. In Abuja, Ekemini Williams, NTA News. Minister of Transportation, Chibuke Rochimi Amichi, advocates active participation of the traditional institution in the governance process. He made the appeal at a consult consultation meeting with traditional rulers in the southwest on his presidential aspiration, Oina Kaloka reports. 
Uh, Ilei Fe, the ancient city in Oshun State, rich in cultural history, gave a warm reception to the Minister of Transportation and his entourage. At the only of Ife's palace, the minister, accompanied by friends and APC stalwarts, calls for consultation of traditional institutions and governance due to their closeness to the people and the critical role they play. In the Imperial Majesty, one of the critical issues that I want this country to look at is the relevance of the traditional institution. Because a lot of things are getting out of hand. No, you can be a president in Abuja and know what is happening in the effect. Thank you for your... Full of praises for the minister in the development of the transportation sector in Nigeria. Only prayed for him. Pray for you for, for the throne of Obudua and on this throne of our ancestors. At Ado Ekiti, the capital of Ekiti State, the traditional ruler gave his royal blessings and prayers to the minister. Cross this great country of ours. While at Ondo State Government House in Akure, where the minister was received by the deputy governor, he stated that federal government is committed to linking major cities and towns in Nigeria by rail. Oyinna Kalu Oka, NTN News. To achieve lasting peace in the society, the need for alternative dispute resolution has become a global mechanism for peace building. To this end, the River State Judiciary, through its multi door courthouse, is championing the course for ADR to reduce litigations in court. Robinson Deratide reports. The world over is engulfed in different crises, resulting in multiplications and prolonged litigations in courts of law. Proponents believe the future of justice system depends, therefore, on alternative dispute resolution ADR. Chief Judge of River State, Simeon Amadi, receiving some foreign and national mediators, act on the River State multi door courthouse policy, which has helped to reduce multiplication of cases. At present, the center is actively engaged in settlement of disputes, mainly through mediation. The external neutral are also invited to settle disputes, especially working matters. It's through the early morning signal approach that conflicts of disputes can be detected early and resolved before they are escalated. ADR methods are based on self-determination, are based on the voluntary will of people to use mediation, to negotiate them, and to come to a settlement. Nobody can force them if they don't want to do it. The culture of violence that has engulfed the world especially in the developing countries means that a lot has to be done to incorporate ADR in our justice system. The River State multi dock Court House is on the verge of establishing alternative dispute resolutions in higher institutions and recognized religious institutions to help mediate civil cases. In Port Harcourt, Robinson, Teratayde, NTA News. And still on conflict resolution, Fatima Makwadi will bring us more on that and all the reports. So, Fatima. Hello oh, and welcome to Makwadi. The Benin state government has set up a 15-man peace and reconciliation commission to initiate harmonious living in various communities of the state. The decision was taken after the State Executive Council met at the Government House, Makudi. Charles Abba reports. The setting up of the 15-man Peace and Reconciliation Commission by the Benue State Government arose from the State Executive Council meeting had which expressed worry over communal clashes and other skirmishes in various parts of the state. Commissioner for Information, Culture and Tourism, Michael Inalegu, explained that the commission is charged with the responsibility of thousand tensions in troubling communities. To the government of Benue State, in their normal desire to bring total peace to the land, came up with the law establishing benefit is a reconciliation commission and this commission has 15 members 
with the chairman, secretary, DG, representative of Minister of Water Resources, Information, all the scholars that are good in this building. When this law comes into effect, instead of taking your into our hands, the persons are at liberty to seek redress by sending petitions to the commission. And the commission will go into the various issues to make sure that such a thing will be resolved amicably. He said the leadership of the commission will be appointed subsequently. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. Benue State Governor Samuel Otom has urged Benue youths to be focused, determined, and imbibe the fear of God in all their endeavors. The governor gave the advice when he received two Benue youths who won national and international laurels. Charles Abba again reports. Emmanuel Odwen Asse, who emerged as winner of the Talent Hunt 2022 in Nigeria, and Doshima Ava, who emerged six best students in spelling B in the entire world, were presented to Governor Simon Oton by the leader, Terence Kwanom. We are excited that you have availed yourself to receive and encourage this electoral movement of the Lord, which the governor praised the two awardees for making Benue proud by winning lorries. He urged the youths to shun internet fraud and other vices and be focused on enterprises by using their talents. So, I encourage the best to look inward, look into the inner heart and pray and meditate and see what God is telling you to do. And those of you who go to church, I think that manners will fall from heaven. It doesn't matter. The Bible says they are saved without works itself. The governor encouraged them to delve into politics as a part time life endeavor to source resources to finance their businesses as to remain relevant in the society. In Makudi, Charles Abba, MTA News. And that's it from Makudi Nationwide continued in Abuja with Ruth. Thank you, Fatima. The Nigerian Army has urged members of the public to disregard a viral video by members of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, alleging complexity in the latest operations by its troops at Ihoma community in Orlu local government area of Imo State. A statement by the Director of Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Onyema Mwachuku, indicates that the troops of the 34 Artillery Brigade on routine patrol encountered members of the prescribed group who fired sporadically at Banana Junction, Orlu, to enforce the illegal sit-at-home order on law-abiding citizens. In the firefight, firefight that ensued, one of the criminals was reportedly neutralized while others fled in disarray, resulting in follow-up operations to track down the fleeing decedent. Kaduna will be our next stop and Amina is set to guide us. Welcome to Kaduna. As Nigeria sets out to rule more than 10 million poor and vulnerable into the second phase of National Social Safety Net Program, which is part of a broader initiative of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty, Kanu State is consolidating on the success of the social investment program. Yahano Sahasa reports that rural women in the state who have been encouraged to form cooperative bodies are benefiting from the scheme. National Program Coordinator, Carlos Fair, Halima Shibu, was at Korea, one of the benefiting local governments in Kano, to see the successes recorded by beneficiaries on that scheme. The stories are commendable. That, uh, this is truly what we wanted the program to impact on the life of the beneficiary. Gather here are representatives of the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, the World Bank, and Switzerland, who converge on Kano for interface with the targeted beneficiaries on the National Social Safety Net program. 
Among them is Hadiza Dawati Mtufa, who says the program has changed her life and that of her orphan children. Impressed with the cheering testimonies of the likes of Hadiza, the delegates applaud them for ensuring profitable investment of their good savings in life enhancing ventures. Each of them told us their personal success, specific and very clear, including meeting their food need, meeting their for security, sending their children to school. While in Kano, the team paid visit to Kano State Governor Abdullah Umar Ganduji, who commended the federal government for initiating the program, stressing that Kano has also followed suit in employment and school feeding programs. In turn, Yohana Sahasa, MTA News. Mobile communication companies in Kaduna are overwhelmed by customers seeking to connect their lines with national identity number. This is coming after the federal government's directive to disconnect subscribers yet to update their lines. Sunday Ademo reports. The nature of this place is a reflection of desperation among customers yet to comply with federal government directives of connecting their lines with their name. They have been barred from receiving calls as their SIM cards are blocked. I leak it last upper week, but the thing didn't do. Like, they were sending me a message that I should leak it or I should visit any nearby MTM office. I confirmed from the MTM, MTM customer center that it has been linked. It has been linked, but just that it's not updated, that I have to, I have to go and update, it, update the NIN. So I went there, they told me that, yes, they, it has not dropped, that you have to wait, waste time to link, that even up to 2020, the people that registered in 2020, that it has not dropped. Omotola Poor DME is among those affected by the policy. It described the situation as frustrating. I don't know why I will put uh, NIN number. And up to now, they refuse to link me. Why, I don't know. I have the document, and uh, I have a lot of money. It's my business line. The implication of adopting this measure is to address security concerns. It will reduce greatly crime and criminality because it will give room for follow-up, it will give room for tracing uh, communication, it will also give room uh, you know, for quick intervention and problem action when it comes to attempt to uh, commit crime or while even the crime is being committed. Investigation shows that more than 125 million SIMs have been linked to their national identity number out of 198 million phone connections. While 72 million subscribers have been barred from accessing their SIM cards due to non-compliance with linkage order. Adamu Sunday, NTA News. And that's it from here. You can now follow this news broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live on our YouTube channel, NTA News Online. <laughs> Welcome back. Reports just reaching us say the thick traffic we have has built up along the Kaduna Rigachukun route in the Kaduna metropolitan area. Now, this is the second time motorists applying the road are encountering the gridlock. Our correspondent reports that vehicular movement along that corridor has been at standstill for several hours, with movement in and out of Kaduna town becoming a challenge. The problem has been adduced to the ongoing rehabilitation exercise along the Zaria Kaduna dual carriageway, as contractors handling the project blocked one lane of the road to enable them carry out repairs. Investigation indicates that impatience of some drivers has further escalated the gridlock. However, efforts are on to ease the traffic congestion to enable free flow of vehicles. We'll bring you much details in subsequent news bulletin. And similarly, we hear Abuja is also witnessing a heavy traffic build up along the Nyanya corridor with commuters groaning over this development, especially as the rush hour is heating up, which is actually now. We don't know the cost yet, but we'll bring you full details in subsequent news bulletin. The central bank having invested more than 300 billion naira in cotton production in the last two years. Key players in the cotton, textile and garment industries are calling for investment towards reviving the sector as planned by the federal government. Musa Aliyu reports. These are key players in the cotton, textile and garment industries discussing the progress and challenges in the revival of the sector. And they discussed the investment so far from the Central Bank of Nigeria. However, 
they observed that the sector is not getting the desired investment as expected. The local tester mills do not uptake enough, so the genus resort to exporting. Exporting textile revival under the CBN. So if they had been able to infuse so much or to invest so much in the cotton production, they must see a way of also selling it to the textile in such a way that uh, it will not be too costly. Representatives of the Central Bank of Nigeria at the dialogue advocated collaboration in order to overtake foreign products in quality and affordable prices. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment is looking at the possibility of reviewing the national policy on textile to make it easy for investors willing to invest in the industry. We are bringing up proposals in such a way that we will begin to grant these subsidies those in incentives that will be able to enable local producers to compete favorably with players like China. There is now a CTG Development Forum that is being registered. That body that will represent the entire CTG sector of Nigeria. And in that doing, it means that that body will be the go-to uh, body uh, representing the CTG sector of Nigeria. So the German Agency for International Cooperation and the European Union have indicated interest towards supporting the revival of the cutting textile and garment industries in Nigeria. Musa Aliyu, NTA News. The Bongum just his Royal Majesty Dad Jacob Gang Buba has inaugurated the Zambiram Committee for the celebration of this year's cultural festival that will usher in the rains and mark the commencement of planting season. Salo Abdurrahman reports. Moderating the committee for the 2022 festival, the Bongbong Joss Dad Jacob Buba, who spoke in Biram, encouraged them to give in their best to show the real cultural heritage of the Biram nation. The royal father called on all Biram's sons and daughters to shun divisive utterances and work for the unity and progress of the Biram nation. Chairman of the planning committee, Dad Shalom Jambal, said more innovations will be showcased this year to signify the potentials of the Biram nation. We are not inventing, we are not creating, we are not copying. We are looking introspectively at who the Bureau man is and what God has endowed him with. And those are the things we look at and celebrate in appreciation to God for what he has done to us and for us and is still doing. He further stated the festival, which comes up in the second week of May, will need the cooperation of all to bring it to fruition. The planning committee has Dar Eric Yakubu as vice chairman, Mr. Yakubu Tadi as chairman information and publication, and William Yang, chairman exhibition technology and industries. In just Salo Abdurrahman Mohammed, NTA News. The Jigawa State Chapter of the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, has organized a special prayer session for the country as part of this year's Easter celebration. Awel Kazauri reports that the prayers focused on God to spare the nation of its numerous challenges. May you guide us, may you direct us, may you have only theory accompany with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Special prayers for the nation to overcome all its challenges with the cleric admonition, the faithful to be doing good to each other. The Chairman Christian Association of Nigeria Jiga State Chapter, Marcus Johanna Dambinta, appreciates God for giving them the opportunity to converge for the prayers in the spirit of Easter celebration. To celebrate his resurrection. And in addition to that, we also see it and as an opportunity to pray for the nation. It's also an opportunity to pray for Jigawa State. And that is the reason why we are at this triangle square to celebrate the resurrected Christ and, so, and to also pray for our leaders and our nation which is passing through many challenges. The chairman called on eligible Nigerians to get their permanent voters cut as elections are around the corner. Awal Muhammad, NTA News. All right, let's